Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. Let's make a gorgeous casual belt out of a simple belt blank and a simple buckle, and you won't believe how easy this is. Now, first note though, Weaver belt blanks are solid leather. Now, the reason I stress that is because of this. I make most of my own belts, but not long ago, I saw a gorgeous design of an, in a Western belt, big manufacturer out there, bought the belt, paid pretty good money for it, six weeks, and I'm not kidding, six weeks into wearing that belt, the back of the tongue broke, stuffed with cardboard. 90% of my belt was cardboard. I'm not doing that again. I'm gonna make my own from here on out. You won't, again, believe how easy this is. But we gotta talk about two things because we wanna make sure we get the right belt, the right width, the right length, and on our buckle, the right style and the right width. Okay, so we're talking about belt blanks. What is a belt blank? Easy enough. Belt blank is gonna come to me. My rivet hole's ready to go. Now I can drop a Chicago screw in there as well, which is what we'll use for our blank. We've got an oblong pre-punched, very nice, very professional round end. Now that's an edge paint. I can leave that natural or I can get these with an edge paint on them. But here's a great thing. Look at the quality in this blank. We skived the bend back. So when that bends, you have a nice flush bend. It's not bulky and it's easy on the leather. This actually is an English, English bridle. Look at that black edge paint on that traditional leather. That is striking. Water buffalo. Very flat, chocolate brown, and of course, the ever popular basket weave with a rope edge. Now, I've got an edge paint on this, but you can dye this, stain it, antique it, and it will be beautiful. Crackled, always very cool, and of course, classic black. So we've got a wide variety, but width is the key here. One and a half inches is standard belt width, but just make sure you get the right width on your, on your blank as you do on your buckle. So let's talk about a buckle real quick. Now roughly there are two kinds of buckles that are most common, all kinds, but for the most part for belts and straps we're going to use either what's called a heel bar. The bar is at the heel of the buckle, so I need either a loop or a keeper, as opposed to a center bar where the buckle itself makes the loop or the keeper. Okay, so as long as we get the right width buckle and the right width loop if we need one and blank, we're on our way. So I tell you what, I'm going to clean this up, let's set a buckle. Well, setting the buckle isn't the hard part. The hard part is picking your colors, matching or contrasting. We have such a wide variety. This is just four of the buckles, and of course, just one of our many belt blanks. But that is beautiful, English bridle. Now, brass, drop that in, timeless classic. That's gorgeous. Nickel, same thing. Antique copper, looks like it was made for that belt. But let's go one step further. We've got a blackened edge. We have the blackened Chicago screws. So let's go with a blackened buckle. Isn't that beautiful? Now, easy enough. We've got a center bar buckle, so my loop or my keeper is built in. All I have to do is come through the back. I'm gonna let the tongue fall through the oblong. Then I'm gonna run that back through there, bend it back. Look at that. We're just almost there, and it's beautiful. All right, so let's set Chicago screws. Now, a Chicago screw is basically a threaded rivet but I like it for two reasons. First off, solid steel, good closure. But secondly, and I've got a nickel backing here, it's got a screw slot in it, so I can change buckles out if I want to. So, female, two from the front. Now I'm gonna flip my belt over on my work surface, and I'm going to let this loop that goes around the bar hang off the edge. It's gonna make it real easy for me to find that Chicago screw, and it slips right in. Now, these simply screw on, but I would say add a little dab of glue in there, not to seal it permanently, but just to keep that tacked in so it won't work itself out over time. Well, that is beautiful already, and we're halfway there already. So, let's put some size holes in this. But to set our size holes, we need a waist size. Easy enough, if you take a belt that you wear commonly, look for the hole, it's got the most wear on it, measure that, and you've got a waist size. Or you can use a tape or simply a piece of string if that's all you have with you. Now, I tend to measure right from the bend back because that gives me a little room for error. So I'm a 34, so I'm gonna take my straight edge or my tape, drop it right, right on my, my bend back and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna mark at 34 inches. Now, one and a half inches seems to be a little too wide. 
one a little too busy. So what I typically will do is go one and a quarter. But here's the thing. I'm going to back in one and a quarter, thus giving me a little room to come inside. Then I'm going to go one and a quarter, one and a quarter, and one and a quarter. So that gives me five holes, just about six inches of measurement there. You can add as many holes in or out as you want. It's your belt. So let's take a, a revolving punch. This is the center of a leather shop. Inexpensive, good quality, C.S. Osborne. But at the same time, this is a great addition to any shop. Now I can set my head to whatever hole diameter I want. I'm going to go somewhere around the second or the third from the largest. Now let's punch holes. And our last hole. Nice. Very clean, very consistent, very professional looking. Now, last thing we need to do. I'm going to come out three inches from my last hole and I'm going to mark my leather because I'm going to put a, uh, an English point punch in here. But if you don't have a punch, I can show you exactly how to set a very nice clean belt tip. So we'll give the tool. Always preferable, very clean, very professional punch. That is beautiful. So how do we do? Well, that is a gorgeous belt. Absolutely. All right. Now, like I said, if you uh, if it's not really economical for you to get the tool because you're only going to make a few belts from time to time, I can take my strap. Now we're just going to use the scrap from the end of that strap. I'm going to put a little mark right in the center. I'm going to scribe in a line. Scribe in a line. Now I can take my knife. Now, not perfect, but it will certainly do. Now also we have a naked end now. You can simply cover that with some edge paint or a Sharpie. So, I hope you have a great time making belts. These belts will last for years and years. Good luck with your project. Mm -hmm.